All right, so we've been talking a moment about adding content, adding your own content, either from your own website or uh, uploading content. So again, this is still the, the part of the monologue. I want to talk about a dialogue. I want to um, give so that I can get. So this is where it comes in. Remember when we set up our interests at the beginning of the day, it said, what are you into? So right now this is what we've got that we've pinned. So if you click, it's not that intuitive unfortunately, but if you click on the little Pinterest logo on the top left, the logo itself, that takes you back to your Pinterest uh, timeline, home screen, whatever it's officially called here. But this is when we had set up earlier, when we had said, I'm into this and I'm into that, that's this screen. So I'm seeing more than 100 healthy dinners. I'm seeing uh, 200 calorie portions. Which of the 200 calorie portions will keep you fuller the longer? So I'm seeing food stuff, pet stuff, uh, cookies and tips for adrenal fatigue, chili lime chicken, so the point is, I'm going to look at this stuff, uh, the waffle recipe, I guess, here. And I'm going to, if you hover over anyone's pins, you have these various actions. So if you hover over the picture, you get pin it, send, and like. So if you go in and you see something and you like it, click like. What happens at that point is, um, this particular account which is, who's this, from Francie Van Eichelen. This particular person on Pinterest then just got a notification on their Pinterest either on the website or on their app or on their email. They got a notification that said, Victor's Bakery liked your pin. So maybe I'll do that over here to this one as well. And maybe this one as well. The point of this is no one knows that I've got Pinterest. Yes, you could recommend your friends and family, but that only goes so far. So what, what you would do, one tactic, which is very similar to the other social networks, is you go in and look at what people are posting, and if it's relevant to what your company is, you can click Like. And the point of that is now that those accounts have gotten in a, a little alert. Victor's Bakery has liked your pin. So what they can do is, up on their notification screen, notice if you click notifications, it shows you news, uh, activity with you, and messages. So they would get a notification there that says Victor's Bakery liked your pin. So then they can click on my profile, and they would view my profile and say, oh, OK, family-owned bakery, San Diego, tasty cookie pictures, nice stuff. And I don't see it here, but they'll see a button that says follow. That's the point of interacting. As I follow, I'm not going to blindly click on follow or like everything. I'm going to judiciously <laughs> click like on things. Some of those people will then get a notification. I mean, all those people will get a notification, and some will then come to my profile. They'll see my boards. They'll see my pictures. They might be interested to follow that one board of crazy cakes. Or if they really like everything I'm about, they might click the follow button at the top right, and they follow all 12 of my boards. So no, you're not going to get followers if people don't know about you, if you're not posting content. So that's why we're going to put three boards, 12 pins, and then start to try to get followers. Because if I look at this, Mary Luzzi's profile, I see a board about art, baby <coughs> crafts, I see a board about fitness and gardening. Sorry to interrupt. I put both computers in 110. They have signs on them. Okay. 209s, even though you're not teaching it in 110. Okay. Just tweak away and then you know, leave them all, get them later. Sounds good. Thank you. For and uh, Jason Adler, he's an instructor in here. 
So the 209 image has like some Android stuff. Just you know, what you do if it crosses over with does, just be careful. Okay, I'll make a note of it before making any changes. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. So Mary Luzi has posted all of this stuff, like detoxifying and healthy foods, antipasto and salad recipes, etc. Uh, so appetizers, dips, and drinks, whatever, breads. So, okay, actually that kind of relates to what my company's about, specifically breads. So she already got a notification that I liked one of her pins. So that might entice her to like some of my own pins, to comment on a pin, or the best compliment is to follow my account. What might entice more followers is, I'm going to follow that board. Again, you give what you get. So if you spend a lot of time giving likes, you might get some likes. If you spend time following boards, you will get some follow-backs. If you spend time commenting on boards, you will get comments back. And as I said in the previous class, and I'll remind us again, we have basically four actions. We want them all. But we've got the action, the lowest level, not that it's the worst, but it's the lowest, is a like. I can give something a like and move on. I've got many more things to see. People will do that to you as well. They're going to like something and just move on. It's the lowest level. It's not the worst. The worst is people do nothing. This is the lowest level. And a higher level would be that they like uh, what, I, what I posted and they might uh, then choose to add a comment. So right here, I'm looking at Mary Luzi's comment, uh, a post, it was 18 hours ago, and I can add a comment. So that takes a little bit more effort. Uh, that takes a little bit more effort because I have to think about, that looks so tasty. Oops. As soon as you press enter, it'll publish it. I forgot. I wanted to break the line. But you... If you add a comment, don't press enter, or uh, it will actually post it. I wanted to make a new line. So um, I deleted that, and I'm writing, uh, looks tasty. We're going to try that recipe this weekend. And now if I press enter, it'll post it. So this obviously took a little more effort than just a plain old like. That also will be that account. Um, Mary will, will be notified. Victor's Bakery left a comment. And so that could then further entice. This person is a real account, a real useful account. I'm seeing their post. I like their post. Okay, I'll follow them. And this is the thing about fishing. You're not always going to catch that fish. You might spend several hours on the lake. And when you, cast, when you catch that one fish, it's all worth it. You spend all day on that lake, you never catch a fish, then fishing is terrible. But here, the more you try, the more bait you put, likes and comments and repins, the more possibility of catching the fish. Followers. Yes? Can you please edit what you didn't like? No, I had to delete it. There's no edit button. No, I have only delete. Kind of like Twitter. Kind of like Twitter. If I tweeted something brilliant but it was misspelled, I can't edit it. I have to delete it, tweet it again. Same thing here on Pinterest. I was going to write something brilliant, but then I cut it off. So I deleted it, and then I started it again, and then I wrote it correctly. So um, this, this is similar like uh, Facebook and Twitter in that there is this element, these elements that we can engage, these actions that we can engage in that could result in follows and likes and comments and so forth, but they do take that time and that effort. Isn't there a shortcut? Yes, there is. Reach into your wallet and take out that credit card, and then we'll start to promote your pins. That's how you can get more activity a lot faster. So if you don't want to do that just yet, no problem. Keep following these tactics. Interact with people. It, again, it's a social network. That's why we had all of those favorites or interests at the beginning, because when we go back to our um, home screen, our timeline here, we'll see stuff that might entice us to interact.
So for example, right away, I can see some of these website, uh, some of these pins are also going to have a link back to the website and a little preview. So I can see here, someone posted this from their Wix. So you can use different, you can have different kinds of websites, and so that one came from Wix. I don't recognize that logo there, but these, um, these are coming from a website. So uh, they added their link from their website, and then that can bring traffic back to back to my site. I showed the example of a reply and a comment. I'm sorry, a, a comment and a like. The other thing that we could do also is the um, the 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 repin. Um, I don't really see any crazy cakes, but let's say again we can always create boards on the spot. So let's say this Oreo truffles. That sounds pretty interesting. So uh, again, I'm going to post someone else's content. So what I'm going to do is, if you click on if you click on any one of the pictures, thumbnails, you should notice that then it becomes full screen where you can easily see these actions. Some of these actions are available as a preview here. We've got pin it, send, and like, but we don't have the option to comment until you click on the picture. Then you still have pin, like it, then you've got visit site, share on Facebook, and then comments. If you don't see comments at the bottom, that means that you haven't um, you haven't verified your Pinterest account. Remember, when we set up the Pinterest account, it asked you for an email. You should go to your inbox and click the link that says, please verify. <coughs> then you'll have some of these features that if you don't have it, like comment, you'll have them now. But what I want to show here is, I want to get, so I'll give. So what I'm going to give here is I'm going to share. I'm going to repin their pin. So if I click pin it, it's going to take their picture, let me pin, uh, pin it on one of my boards. <coughs> if it had a description, it would have come along with it, or I can add my own. I'm pinning someone else's content. And you're going to mix that up. I can't exactly tell you a percent. I can give you a rough estimate in a moment. But you're going to pin some amount of other people's stuff and some amount of your own stuff. If you want to start with some, with some, um, with some goals in the beginning, I would say 60% your stuff, 40% their stuff. So if you're going to pin, if you're going to resolve to pin 10 things this week or today, the ratio works out obviously. Six pins of your own, four of someone else's. You can of course increase or decrease that, but it's not always going to be your own stuff. It's not always going to be about, look at me, buy this, order now. It's going to be other people's stuff too. Irrelevant irreverent stuff, that's fine. That helps build your character on Pinterest, your audience on Pinterest. So I'm going to pin this. It's someone else's. I don't have a board that exactly relates to it, so I can easily create one right here. Create a board. This is just going to be uh, crazy, crazy foods. I could rename the other one to crazy foods instead, but Let's just say I want to do it this way. Crazy Foods. No collaborators at the moment. It doesn't give me the ability to add a description here. I would have to remember to go back to edit the board and add a description, which is important because that's how people find you. So if you do create a board at this moment, you can't add a description. Create. And then it adds it right away.
so I am a baking site but again it doesn't always have to be my content so this kind of fits into my crazy foods board these uh, what are these these are like uh, these are dragon claws barbecue appetizers they seem to be like uh, chorizo filled jalapenos with bacon so I can pin that put it in my this one did come in with the description notice that it was already there I can edit that I can remove it completely I can leave it as is it's okay whatever you do there but this is gonna go into my crazy foods board If I go back to my profile, then this shows I've got four boards, four pins in total. And this is what I'm saying about filling these boards at least with four items so that the board has content. So when people come to visit my profile, they can then um, they can then uh, be more enticed to either follow a board or follow my whole profile. Let's say I'm not going to focus on just crazy birthday cakes. I'm just going to focus on crazy food. So I can come back to my boards, click Edit. I can further edit that. And I've got Delete Board. Now here's one of the things about Pinterest that you may love or hate. When you add something to Pinterest, and let's say someone repins your pin, and then you delete your pin on your profile, that didn't delete the pin on their profile. They have to delete the pin on their profile. So if I uploaded something and it was later embarrassing or controversial or irrelevant and I go back to my boards here and I select this one pin to delete edit delete if I delete it if someone else had shared it now they have a copy of it and so if I delete mine it didn't delete theirs so I might really like that because then my content stays on Pinterest and I might really hate that because my content stays on Pinterest. So you just have to realize whatever you add here you, you want to make sure you're adding it on purpose that it's important and relevant and be aware that if it gets shared to other accounts and you delete yours it doesn't delete theirs, their copy of it. Yes? No, unfortunately not. So if if your picture then get re, did get repinned and then they wrote something negative, then yes, then that negativity will stay there. You don't have the ability to take off their comment. You do have the ability to uh, to report it for abuse and such, and then Pinterest might then um, help you out with that. But directly, you don't have that ability. So notice the pins have a little flag on the corner, not yours because it's yours. But if you look at other people's pins, there's that little flag. Click that. And then here you can say, report this. I don't want to see this. We can help you block or unfollow. This is spam. This goes against Pinterest policies like nudity and hurtful language. This pin isn't useful. The link is broken. This is my intellectual property. So we have some recourse there to help us deal with that. It's not as refined definitely as Facebook or Google Plus in that you can control your message better on those two networks. This is a little bit more open like Twitter, whereas on Twitter you tweet something 
and the message could get away from you, there's not much you can do about it. You can try to report it and such, but you can't control other people's tweets and hashtags and such. Very similar here on Pinterest. Once it goes out into Pinterest, if other people start to repurpose that picture for something negative, you have some recourse, but you don't have the ability to remove other people's comments and hashtags and that sort of thing. Now, the, that, that tactic of interacting with other people to get you interactions is a, is a solid one. It does take that effort of you trying to find other content. So here's another related method. We had clicked on the, on the logo, but we've got a big old search box right there. So if we search for crazy cakes, Notice there's also uh, trends that might pop up. Uh, but anyway, crazy cakes. There might be suggestions. Crazy cakes, crazy cakes designs, crazy cakes for kids, crazy cake recipes. There might be boards that pop up, because there's my crazy cakes, and there's also Chanel Jones's and Deborah Ann Miller's. This is what I'm saying about it. Name your things properly. Uh, Pinterest's search feature is very cool and powerful. It's only working inside of Pinterest, though. This is not a Google search out to others' websites. This is only working in Pinterest. Therefore, if we optimize ourselves with our keywords, writing in the descriptions properly, adding all of that searchable content, hashtags and such, people could find us. So if someone was looking for crazy cakes, it may, mine may pop up. So let's see, I'm going to skip those boards for the moment, but I'm just going to search for what do I get with crazy cakes? So notice it was basically the keyword crazy cakes. So there's a bunch of crazy cakes. Very crazy. And I can have I can further refine my search. Recipes of crazy cakes. Graham cracker crazy cakes. Wacky crazy cakes, if that's possible. And so again, as I am writing in my keywords and descriptions and such. It is in, in service of me getting found because people are being more specific. They're not just going to search cakes. They're going to search crazy cakes, maybe crazy chocolate cakes. So as I specify, that could help me. That crazy cake is perfect to get pinned into my crazy cakes category or pin board. So don't be afraid to use that search because other people are using it. Yes. If you uh, you have to pin the picture first, it has to be pinned to your it has to be pinned to your um, board. Then, when you want to choose a certain lead picture, you have to click Edit the board. And we have <coughs> Cover. It's the cover picture. Change it. And based on the pictures that you've got in the board, then you can choose the cover picture. So you have to have it pinned first then edit the board, now we're changing the cover photo. And sometimes after you click Save, it doesn't update right away. I've seen this for a few people, they've made changes and nothing changes on screen. Sometimes Pinterest needs a, a good kick, so you want to uh, refresh or reload the screen, and then if something didn't change, then it should change.
so you can fine-tune things. This picture that was on this board, I'm going to keep it, but a moment ago it automatically was cut off like that. After I repositioned it a bit, then it kind of shows the picture off a little better. So to find people to interact with, I can go back to my home screen, I can do searches, and also I've got on the, on the right edge of that search box, you see those three little lines? This is a special menu here. Click on that, and now I can also go specifically to particular topics, these interests that we chose previously. So I'm going to click that and let's say, show me about food and drink. It's kind of like doing a search for food and drink which then I find a bunch of food and drink I can focus on. We might have some related interests on top here. The point of this is you're going to give to get. You're going to give likes. You're going to give comments. You're going to give repins. You're going to give follows. And you're going to get some amount of them back. The more you do it, the better. If you resolve to spend 10 minutes once a day on doing some of those things, that's going to get you pretty far. If you only use Pinterest once a month, once a week, well, you're using it less, so therefore people don't know you as much. Your content, they might not find you. So the more content you add, the more you are active, interact with people, because there's people behind all of these profiles usually, or companies, you become, you make yourself aware to them, and then you'll get you'll get back what you put in. And what I showed you about sharing something from your website, well, yeah, great, I've got all of these followers, now so what? My, my ego is great because I've got 200 followers, so what? Well, we're adding these pictures, we're adding these photos, videos, links, back to our website. Where at my website, they can read the full recipe, where they can buy that cake, where they can subscribe to the newsletter, etc. broccoli tots. All right, so before I keep making myself more hungry, um, we're coming toward the end of the main lecture. Uh, so again, everything that I've talked about I've recorded a, as a video. You can play it and replay it. Um, you want to send me a link? to get these videos. If you missed part one, remind me to send you for part one. Remember on your email to tell me, please send me the videos for the social media class, part two, because I teach more than one class. I'll take some general questions and then we'll have a little lab time. So from everything that we've talked about, it's, it's a lot, but the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. But do we have any general questions? And the main idea is you want to get social on the social networks. Um, when we come back next week, we're going to uh, talk about YouTube. Uh, we're going to talk about it in theory, and then we're going to do it in practice, where we will actually make some videos and such, uh, showing you how to use this video software. Because you can easily record something and upload it, but it probably won't be exactly like your vision. So we'll talk a little bit about some basic video editing, creating the profile, uploading it, making it interesting and seeing the character then of, of, uh, of YouTube. Yes? So would it be move us to show up with a little video that we made but they were on our own? If you do have a, a video with you, that's great. Yeah, if you already come with... Yeah. I'm going to provide one if, if you don't come with one, but if you come with your own video, uh, that, that'd be nice. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything that complicated. One minute maximum for the moment but I'll provide you with one if you don't have any videos. So that's it for today. We'll have some lab time until 1 o'clock. If you need individual help, call me over.